In the comments of my last video, someone mentioned that the financial cost is all well and good, but are these heat pumps really environmentally friendly? Are they really saving us in our carbon footprint? So um, if you haven't seen that video, I suggest you go back. It will run you through my financials and it will highlight exactly what system I've got. I'm currently heating a four bed detached house. The Heated parts of the house are 127 meters squared. I've got a valent air source heat pump, hot water cylinder controls, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, what I want to jump to is I've actually done the sums on how much uh, CO2 we are saving in our case, which turns out that in December we saved 311 kilograms, kilos of CO2. And uh, that surprised me. They, those figures were actually a lot higher than I expected. So I went backwards and forwards a few times trying to understand how the best way to calculate these figures, um, you know, what's the best method to use. And there are a few methods out there, but ultimately I've gone for kind of the average method. What I've done here is you can see if I click on, let me just click in the middle here, 13th of December, uh, the heat pump used or emitted 1.72 uh, kilograms of CO2 and of course the electro electricity generated is not carbon free um, despite what some of your energy providers uh, may tell you so what I did to get the figures um, you'll oh you can't see the formula because of how I've uh, set up my screenshot so what I've done is this is I've taken the electrical input that the heat pump has used and I've times that by 0 0.123 now why have I times that by 0 0.123 well that's because on websites such as this electricityinfo.org um, you can get data for the grid mix um, for the grid and it will also show you importantly from the 1st of December to the 31st of December the average was 123 grams per kilowatt hour of CO2 now that's why I've used the 0 0.123 so 14 times 0 0.123 gives me 1.72 kilograms of CO2 now how did I go about uh, ca uh, calculating the equivalent of uh, CO2 that a gas boiler would have emitted. How did I get to 12.6 kilograms on this day in question, 13th of December? Well, in that case, I took the heat generated, which was 58.6 kilowatt hours of heat that were put into the building, and I times that by 0 0.215. Now, what? why did I do that? Where did I come to those figures? Um, 250 15 grams per kilowatt hour seems to be a commonly recognized figure that uh, gas boilers emit and that's not the consumption of gas but that is factoring in that gas boilers are not totally efficient i searched around and there are many different um many different interpretations but 215 grams per kilometer seems to be the the accepted widely accepted and general consensus in most areas there were other places that like to highlight that uh, actually oil boilers can be 320 grams per uh, kilowatt hour of co2 so if you're on an oil boiler then you're going to save a huge amount amount more than i am here and this is also not factoring in the um, that I effectively had a 60% efficient boiler before we changed to a heat pump. So compared to our old boiler, we are saving a lot more than this. Um, these figures are uh, comparing to a modern condensing boiler that is working relatively efficiently, whereas my figures, uh, if I was to adjust this for my 60% non-condensing boiler, would be a lot higher. But I've already got sick of the complaints in the comments of people telling me it's not a level playing field in my comparisons. Um, so anyway, this is how I got to the figure of uh, saving 311 kilograms of CO2 just in one month of December. It was a mild month. 
um, you can see that my average coefficient of performance was 4.1. Um, in my last video, it was 4.3 something. So you may be asking, why has this changed? Well, thanks to a couple of the commenters, they pointed out that some of the formulas were not calculating things correctly. Um, I put up here on the 11th of December, that's when we migrated from the Senso app to the MyValent app and it lost some of the data and some of the data was incomplete and because of that some of the um, calculations were incomplete and incorrect. But I have now corrected those and I've double checked all of these, they are all working correctly the coefficient of performance for heat is just the heat output and the total of that uh, which is 1682.5 divided by the input which is 410.4 and the same for the domestic hot water uh, oh sorry no heat is 1437.4 divided by 340.7 but the total overall was as I said previously and for domestic hot water um, it's 245 divided by 69 so um, I hope that gives you a little bit of an idea and that has um, changed it did change the oh the graph's gone all out of whack but we have completed the graph anyway and as you can see for the vast majority of the month obviously we had a few colder days at the beginning where we were down in the threes but otherwise for the vast majority of the month we were still well above the four um, in our coefficient of performance um, what else did I want to share oh just the comparison this was also a few people were a little bit um, dubious uh, this is not going to work well now um, if there's a coefficient of performance of 4.1 it shows a financial saving of 466 pounds I should reduce some of the decimal places on this sheet and try and compact it a little bit um, this is the cost saving or loss so you can see at uh, whoa at 2.3 we are already um, in the green that is uh, basing on the 60% efficiency and I have already updated to the new uh, government cap uh, energy cap prices so we're on 7.52 pence per kilowatt hour of gas and we are on 28.79 pence per kilowatt hour of electricity. Um, if we readjust that, because I know I get all the complaints every single time. Here we go, let's pop that back in. 80% efficient, which is the average efficiency of a condensing boiler um, with it cycling and not set up correctly with the weather and compensation, etc., etc. All the caveats, let's get them all in there because all the gas uh, lovers are going to come after me and all the gas engineers are going to tell me I'm wrong every time. Um, if we're achieving a, it, that's a 80% efficiency with these uh, prices, depending on your region and your tariff, you may be slightly different, but the current market cap for where I am in the south, 7.5 for gas, 28.79 for electricity, and that shows that we will break even at a coefficient of performance of 3.1, um, bearing factoring in the 80% boiler efficiency. If we are going for my average efficiency so far, 4.1, then we will be saving 268 pounds per year, financially speaking. On top of that is the 100 pounds um, per year in standing charges that I no longer have to pay for my gas because I had the meter removed. So in theory, a saving of £368 per year in comparison to a modern condensing boiler. I hope this is helpful and I hope this will dispel some myths that it is both financially beneficial in terms of running costs uh, for a boiler and that it is also um, environmentally an absolute no-brainer 311 kilograms in one month I'll be interested to see how we do in January teaser the coefficient of performance has been uh, plummeting a little bit in recent days as we've had a bit of a cold snap but it's still performing well and as we 
consume more energy that just means the savings in co2 are dr oh okay we're showing too much now we don't want to give the game away um our savings in co2 have absolutely skyrocketed um i'll just give you one little sample yesterday alone we saved 22.5 kilograms of co2 and if you compare that to the last day of december where we saved 9.43 so you can see how the much colder weather means that we're dr using more energy to heat the home but it also means that our carbon savings are greater anyway i've rambled on for long enough i hope something in my waffling was helpful and as ever if you spot anything that is incorrect here or you've got any suggestions for me pop them in the comments i like to engage with everyone that's watching and uh I'm learning a lot from the comments as well. Don't don't think by any means that I'm an expert. I'm just an amateur enthusiast that's just trying to record and share my data with others. So anything that you can share with me so we can all learn and uh, improve the general understanding of heat pumps, that'd be brilliant. Take care, bye.